Okay, let's get started. If other people come in, they can join us in progress. Uh, good evening. Thank you for coming tonight. My name is Deanna Bolio, and I work in community outreach uh, and public engagement here at VTA. This is our second community meeting for uh, the Valley Transportation Plan 2050. Our first one was back in November. So we're just really happy to talk to you about this project and get your input. So thank you for coming out. Um, please note that this meeting is being recorded just for your reference. Let's get to the agenda. Our slide, please. So our agenda for this evening uh, will include a short poll to learn more about who's with us this evening here to talk. Uh, we'll talk about BTA's role in Santa Clara County. We'll introduce you to the uh, BTP, talk about what this project is, talk about the preliminary plan vision um, and ask for your help in identifying goals. And then we'll close with a timeline and some next steps. Next slide. So first we'll just touch base on some Zoom logistics today that will help you participate later on. Um, there is a, both a Q&A function and a chat function. Um, so as questions come up, we encourage you to use the Q&A function. Um, type your message or type your question into the box using uh, the toolbar at the bottom of your screen. And we will answer those as we get to the appropriate uh, stage in the presentation. Or if you would rather not type it, you can raise your hand to ask a question um, using, all, using the function also on your toolbar. Um, when it's your turn, the host will ask you to unmute yourself. Um, you can accept the unmute and begin speaking. Um, and if anybody is using phone audio rather than their computer audio, the way that you raise and lower your hand is to press star nine. And the way to mute and unmute yourself is to press star six. Thank you. So right now I'm just going to launch a quick poll. Um, if you come to any of our online meetings, you might've seen these questions before. Um, it's completely voluntary, but for those of us um, who work for BTA, especially those of us in outreach, um, it helps us know who is attending our meetings and how reflective the meeting is of the population in general. So um, it lets us know what additional outreach we might wanna do. It's a little bit of a guidance tool for us. So I will leave the poll open for maybe another 20 seconds or so. Um, and I'll close that and share the results. Great, thank you. I will close the poll now and share the results with you. Uh, at this time, we have 11 people in the meeting. We've had eight people um, participate in the poll. So we can see our age range is spread out from 18 to 24 to 65 plus, which is great. We really want to uh, gather the community as a whole. Uh, we have uh, our race ethnicity category is kind of split 50-50 uh, between white Caucasian and Asian Asian American. Uh, and then if we scroll down to the fourth question, which is really what we're gonna be talking about the most today, what is your primary mode of travel? We see that 75% use a personal vehicle as their predominant mode of travel, one as a bus light rail and one pedestrian getting around on foot. So. Um, we appreciate you sharing that information with us. Like I said, it's pretty helpful in deciding what we're doing and how we're reaching people. And with that, I will turn it over to John Scomney, who's managing the Valley Transportation Plan to talk more about it. Sure, thanks Deanna for, for the introduction. Um, my name is John Scomney, I'm the Senior Transportation Planner here at VTA working on this long range transportation plan. Um, before we get to that, I kind of wanted to um, just kind of introduced a lot of people to kind of the many functions of VTA as an agency. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with us as the transit operator. So they see our buses, they see the light rail, um, and that's kind of what they, um, you know, uh, look at VTA as, as the transit operator. We are that. 
Uh, but we're a little bit more than that. Um, as you see here on the slide, there's this little wheel that we like sharing with uh, all the folks here. Um, and really, we play many different roles. We're involved in the building of various transportation improvements, uh, but we're also involved in uh, planning and funding. So not only are we the transit operator, we're also the county uh, transportation agency, which means um, we do this function where we uh, figure out solutions to reduce congestion. Um, so we have a congestion management program that looks at ways we can reduce uh, the impacts of, of driving. Um, we also did a lot of work on the BART project, as you're very familiar with the BART phase one project that's now open until uh, Berryessa. Uh, we're working on phase two with a variety of different partners and the public. Um, and then we also have done various improvements on our highway system. So uh, some of the projects you may be familiar with uh, could be the 880-237 um, interchange. Um, we've worked with uh, various uh, uh, partners on our express lane program, uh, focusing on um, paying to use the HOV lane. Uh, and we also uh, build and facilitate uh, planning work for other facilities in partnership with our member agencies. So we do a lot of planning related to bicycle and pedestrian work. Next slide. And so you may be thinking, well, what is BTP? And BTP uh, or the Valley Transportation Plan 2050. So you'll hear me using that uh, um, acronym VTP a lot. And that is really the long range transportation plan uh, for transportation. But apart from transportation, we also look at uh, things related to land use, uh, tra transit, and bicycle and pedestrian planning. Really, the main one of the main objectives of the VTP is to identify transportation projects and programs. Um, and what this plan does is actually looks out 30 years. So ima imagine yourself looking out 30 years. What do you envision the transportation system to look like? And what are some of those projects and programs that help facilitate uh, that. Um, one of the other reasons we do this planning work is this is a good vehicle to access funding for various improvements. So uh, once you're in our long range plan, that uh, makes it more visible to federal and state uh, funding authorities. Um, so a project or a transit uh, improvement that we include in this project has high visibility for funding. It's, it's kind of like a driving license in, in a way. It's like a license to secure funding. Um, we also help our member agencies, uh, you know, secure that funding for improvements of their own projects that they do on their own. Uh, we are also part, a subset of uh, the regional plan Bay Area, which is the long range transportation plan for the nine county Bay Area, which the Metropolitan Transportation Commission uh, works on. And we update this plan every five years. Uh, because this is such a long outlook, one of the things that we are thinking about doing uh, for, for our plan process going forward is to actually kind of break it down to short, medium, and long. And what are the things we can do uh, in, in the short term? What are the things we can do in the long term? What are the things we do in between? And this is a really important thing to, to note because we are going to be doing this every five years. Um, we're going to be more on a schedule to do it every five years. So there's uh, ample opportunity in the coming years to update the plan and update what goes into the plan. And the last one that we did was actually back in 2014. So it's been a very long time. And since that time, we've had, you know, obviously the COVID pandemic, we've had ups and downs in the economy of California and, and the United States. So there's a lot of different factors going into it. But uh, if we prepare a plan that looks uh, long term, we can try to identify some of those solutions in the meantime. Next slide. So some of the factors that we should consider. Uh, one of the things that we've gathered through data collecting through, our, through the Metropolitan Transportation Commission is that more than a third of the region's growth will be within Santa Clara County, which means there'll be uh, 450,000 more households and 500,000 more jobs within this county. So even though the pandemic uh, had some effects, and in fact, some of the planning work that we, that we look into may have some you know, uh, relation to uh, new modes of travel and things like that, we also want to be consistent with what's being put out there by Plan Bay Area, which is that you know, our county is going to grow faster than everyone. 
And another thing to focus on is that uh, a lot of uh, the housing and job growth will be really focused upon particular job centers. And those are, generally speaking, a lot of those major transit corridors and hubs. So a lot of the locations that have uh, high frequency of transit service um, are expected to carry a lot of the growth in the future. Another thing to consider, um, apart from that, is you know we want to really also kind of consider the underserved communities. Uh, the MTC also developed a a geography called the equity priority communities, and those are communities that have a uh, low income profile. Uh, in some cases, they're limited in English speaking. Uh, some of them are rent burdened. Some of them, uh, you know talk about disabilities and, and some of them has our older population. So it's kind of a, a variety of factors based on census data that are, you know, we're looking at, well, how do we help those communities uh, apart from everybody else? Next slide. So what are we asking you today? So really our vision is gonna be guided by, you know, a lot of the feedback that the public provides uh, but at the same token, we want to con consider things like what I mentioned, kind of the growth of the population in the future, and what are some of the transit tra transportation needs that we want to see in the next 30 years and beyond, uh, and how do we, you know, capture other you know factors such as equity and obviously the uh, ongoing climate crisis. We want to uh, try to understand what that is, and really what we're trying to do at this stage is really focus our efforts on vision and goals and what should be considered for the plan. What are your priorities for transportation? And then how do we achieve that achieve that shared vision? And later on, I'll, I'll share with you kind of our, our calendar of um, the, the plan process um, and, and each stage of our plan process. And this is just kind of the first stage. We will be doing a lot more public outreach with the community and not only our community, but our uh, elected officials as well as our city partners. So. Um, the, the feedback you provide to us helps us in combining the other feedback we get through other avenues to uh, come up with a vision and goals and that we hope to adopt through our uh, VTA board of directors. Um, and in the springtime, we'll have an, uh, a feature where we start to talk about projects and develop uh, a, a list of projects to be included in the next 30 years. But hopefully in the fall, you know, we'll have a draft plan, not only of projects, but in some cases, uh, strategies and policies that we will get adopted by our board. And again, your feedback that you provide tonight is actually really helpful to us in establishing some of uh, the initial vision and goal for the work. Next slide. So talk a little bit about some draft concepts we were thinking about. And again, we are not at this stage tied to them, but we wanna get your feedback on what you, you, what you all think is important for the plan. Uh, next slide. So we want to set a vision for this plan, but you know we need to identify what that vision is. Um, we have a couple examples here on the screen, and once we get to our exercise later on, we'll give you an opportunity to provide, provide us some feedback on what you all think should be that vision. So the first thing we have here is that we VTA builds partnerships to deliver transportation solutions that meet the evolving mobility needs of Santa Clara County. The other one is based off our VTA strategic plan, which uh, for the most part, uh, in some sense, is an internal facing document. But one of the features that we have in there is to innovate the way Silicon Valley moves. And these are not things that we're tied to for this plan process, but these are some examples of things that have been developed for uh, previous uh, efforts. Um, next slide. So we want to talk about what the goals would be uh, apart from the, after we develop that vision. And really, one of the areas that we want to look at is land use. Um, we want to have vibrant, equitable, and thriving cities. Uh, one of the things we want to do is support our local cities in addressing, you know, of state requirements through our uh, internal land use process. We have a transit-oriented communities, or we have a transit-oriented communities policy that is focused on uh, the areas that we own and our station areas that we apply um, various uh, um, criteria for development in those er in, in those sections. And we also want to uh, look at other options for transportation. 
Uh, so not only um, bus and light rail transit um, or, or bike and ped, but what are other uh, options? Are there micro mobility options such as you know scooter share or bike share that we could look at? Are there micro transit options that can support those land uses? Next slide. So we want to establish a, a goal for complete streets. Another category is to provide sustainable transportation options that support health and safety. We want to, we were we considering, should we develop a, uh, a vision zero safety program? Uh, we want to pursue a completion of our bicycle superhighway network. And we really wanna focus this on designing the roadway to meet uh, the requirements of everyone. So regardless of if you uh, ride a bike, walk, take transit or drive, we wanna make sure those streets are safe for you. Next slide. So transit. So one feature that we're doing with this transit uh, category is that we wanna provide faster, more reliable and convenient transit. Really what we're actually doing is another um, uh, effort called the VTA Visionary Network for Transit. And really what we're looking at to do uh, in, the, in that process is to actually focus our efforts on looking at ways we can expand transit access to different areas and identify various corridors that could be served reliably by transit. We wanna consider looking at moving towards a 10 minute frequency. Uh, some of our major routes are, as many of you know, are on a 15 minute frequency, but are there ways we can improve that frequency to make it more appealing uh, for those that use for for those to, that use transit and uh, encourage those that want that we want to use transit. Uh, do should we extend the hours of operation, improve frequency on our weekends, and should we increase service levels um, and finding ways that we can uh, provide that first and last mile connections, not only to regional transit but uh, between um, different land uses and the transit stations that we have. Next slide, yeah. Uh, and so now the other area that we wanna look at also is highways and expressways. And we wanna focus our efforts on to uh, focusing on uh, efficient movement on highways and expressways. We wanna complete our express lane program. We want to work with the county on updating their expressway program to make it more amenable to um, the complete streets program where we wanna make them usable for all users in, in some cases. Another, you know, there are another ways we can look at other ways to improve the efficiency on the expressway network. Uh, we also want to look at efficiency based design practices. We want to kind of focus a little bit more of our attention on the highway program on efficiency and improving interchanges and then making it usable for uh, not only automobiles, but also the other uh, aspects of travel, such as bike and pad and transit. And, you know, we are considering should we, you know, have a target that focuses on uh, congestion reduction. It could be based on uh, greenhouse gas targets that the state has provided, uh, or it could be something else. But we really wanted to, you know, kind of share some of those thoughts with you right now and encourage you to, you know, give us some feedback on, on what you all think. And there could be other areas that, you know, we are, haven't captured perfectly. Right, I mentioned earlier on in kind of the vision and goals and what we're looking for in this effort today, but we want to understand, are there equity challenges that are out there that we should consider as part of the development of the plan? Are there um, climate crisis related things we need to do? Of course, uh, a lot of that will be focused on improving our transit service, but providing other options that don't require us to drive. So you wanna keep those in mind. Next slide. So we're going to do a, a, a mural exercise, and I'll turn it over to Deanna in a second. But what we want to do is really get a sense from you all. We want you to kind of put down your thoughts on, you know, kind of what that vision statement would be. Um, and we also want to uh, ask you later on what you think some of those goals should be for those uh, four categories. Um, and there could be things that we missed or things that we're not taking into account that you, you all have thought of. And it would really be helpful to get an understanding from, from you all what that what those things are. But before we get to that, I, I noticed there's some uh, uh, there's some uh, there's some uh, Q and A here. I want to see if there's any comments related to um, to the some of the Q and A right now before we move into the mural exercise. Uh, Deanna, you want to see if there's any comments or questions that have popped up? 
I knew that I was going to talk with the mute button on. I just, it's a given. Um, so uh, we've got a, a few different comments or questions. One was about Caltrain electrification to South County. And it says, can VTA work with Caltrain, California High Speed Rail, and possibly other region, regional agencies to make this happen? This was promised in 2000 Measure A. Um, and I actually have some information on this if you don't, John. <laughs> sure, yeah, go ahead, Deanna. Uh, sure. So a uh, question like this came up recently, and I didn't have an answer at the time. So uh, I asked around, I got some information. Um, and so the tracks between Tamian and Gilroy um, belong to Union Pacific, and they actually were not in favor of um, electrifying their tracks at this time. So the ways that VTA has helped um, was in doing some infrastructure work around Tamian and around Gilroy Station, but we haven't done anything to the tracks in between at this time. Um, and that's ultimately up to, I think, California Highway or High Speed Rail. Um, if High Speed Rail is going to come through that way, that would be the time to uh, talk more about electrification between Gilroy and San Jose. Um, Here's a question for you, John. What's the deadline for the public to submit comments for BTP um, and the Visionary Network? My group has some comments they would like to make and I want to send a group letter expressing these comments. Sure, uh, for, for this first phase, when we're talking about vision and goals, uh, we would appreciate comments um, by the end of February. Um, we wanna kind of put together a kind of a grouping of what we've heard so far, because we're gonna go through this process of sharing it with our, our, our committees and our board. So I would say by the end of uh, February would be great for this first phase. Again, as I mentioned, I'll show you later in the, in the, in the time frame. there'll be other opportunities when we talk about uh, different topics, but feel free to submit your feedback, at least on the vision and goals by the end of February, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, and here's some acronyms that I'd like you to explain. Uh, so a comment says, VMT doesn't consider traffic congestion, LOS does. Yeah, so there's a, a movement at the state level and it's, it's kind of universal for uh, California. I mean, um, the way we measure congestion is th currently is through what they call level of service. Uh, basically it's determining, you know, what, Either you know we've done in the past just counting vehicles at intersections and determining you know kind of uh, the scale of what that is. If it's super congested, it's good, labeled a level of service F. Um, if it's not congested at all, it's labeled level of service A. So it's like an A to F scale of what that is. Uh, v VMT is actually really vehicle miles traveled, and it really measuring something different. It, it, it remember it you know kind of it measures. Um, um, you know, kind of the distance traveled and, and, and the time it, it and the time it took you to to get there, um, and so there's going to be a, there's been a movement, especially through the planning process through the uh, environmental acts, uh, California Environmental Quality Act, um, that looks at any project you do that uh, triggers a CEQA determination uh, that LOS will no longer be used, the level of service will no longer be used to determine. Uh, you know, the, the improvements that you decide on. It's gonna be determined on something else. Um, and what they're looking at right now is vehicle miles travel. Um, we have another comment uh, that says it's, you know, hard to talk about equity while uh, supporting or expanding toll lanes. I don't know. Yeah, you know. That, and, and that's, you know, that's a program that we're working on, the express lane program, but uh, there's an, an additional effort uh, that the Metropolitan Transportation Commission is heading up called the Next Generation Freeway Study. That's actually looking at the effectiveness of the ex express lanes, and uh, you know, understanding what are the um, equity ramifications of that. Uh, should there be like a sliding scale, uh, depending on your income, um, or is it looking at you know, you know, is it looking at other ways to improve uh, uh, express lane by uh, either having one single fare? Uh, there's various different options that they're looking at, but right now MTC is going through a process and BTA is participating with the other counties into looking at um, the feasibility of equity on uh, express lanes. Um, and, it may, and the study is still ongoing. It's kind of a year process. Um, 
they are, you know, looking into that right now. And there's actually been some feedback that they've done as part of their community outreach that, you know, is, you know, really against kind of um, tolling the entire freeway network. Uh, so there's a lot of things um, uh, that, that's going on right now. And that process should be wrapping up, I want to say, uh, in the summer time frame. Great, thank you. Um, I, there's Sorry, I had a window pop up in my office. It um, says, I'm aware of the SR85 Express Lanes project, but why have phase four be between US 101 and 87 and not just extend from 237 to SR17? SR-17 as a single lane conversion. Yeah, I think that's something we, we should take back to our highway group, uh, have them answer on, on that question. If, if Michael wants to leave his information, we can definitely send him a response on that. Um, uh, I think our highway team can have a better answer on um, kind of their their um, determination of uh, the, the phases of, uh, the, of the express lane project on 101.85. Yes, so Michael, uh, we're gonna have a slide up, I think later with uh, community outreach's email address, but um, if we can get your contact information, we can follow up on that one. Um, let's see. Thanks. Um, I think we've got one more before we can move on to the mural. And it says, glad to see VTA maps noting priority development areas. Very large projects are being approved, planned in areas with fairly light bus service. Our San Jose council member tells us that it's a chicken and the egg problem, that if many thousand units of housing are built, more frequent bus service will come. We hope that transit rich areas are targeted for 10 minute bus service. That's a good way to yeah, say that. That's a good I comment. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's a really good comment. I think we can take that back. Um, definitely, you're right. Um, I think just to answer, just to kind of state a couple of things. Um, so the Metropolitan Transportation Commission actually um, is really, um, that that framework of priority development areas is really going to be targeted for a lot of funding. So one of the, the sticks they're using is if you don't have a PDA, it's going to be more challenging to get funding to, to you. And really what PDAs focus on is actually developing, uh, putting your development along uh, uh, high frequency transit. So right now their, uh, their scale is 15 minute frequency is considered high frequency. Um, and a lot of the focus will be on improving those locations. So there's, so the geography that is a priority development area is uh, is an area that has been approved by the city council uh, for the particular city and submitted to MTC to be included as part of that program. Um, great. Well, we'll get to some more questions a little bit later. Uh, now we're going to turn it over to you. And let's hear from you guys. So um, can we get the next slide. Uh, next Sorry, slide. one after that, yes. So using a tool called Mural, uh, we're gonna give you an open canvas to contribute your thoughts. And we're gonna give this about 15 minutes or so. So one of our team members just put a link in the chat uh, to Mural. You'll get a window like this little black screen that you see here. Um, you'll be randomly assigned an animal avatar. Um, here I am the visiting snail. Um, you can type in your name if you would like, or you can just state your animal. It's completely up to you. Um, and then you'll click enter as a visitor. And I'm gonna share my screen so people can follow along. So on this board, we're gonna talk about visions for the uh, BTP and goals in the four categories that John just laid out in his presentation. So to comment, you can double click anywhere you would like to make a comment and begin typing in your sticky note. Here's my test note. Test. <laughs> um, and if you have lots of ideas, you can keep adding more sticky notes. So don't feel like you have to stop at one. Um, and if you would like to contribute, um, but you're having trouble accessing the digital canvas, um, that's okay. Put your ideas in the chat um, and a VTA staffer will make a note, a sticky note for you. So now that we're in the mural, uh, we're gonna start with our overall vision. So let's start at column one and uh, discuss what visions you have or suggestions you have for VTP's vision and goals. Um, 
think yeah, so about what, oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, sorry. Yeah, the first uh, the category right there is really suggestions for VTAs, VTPs vision. So with the plan, what should that vision statement look like? What should that vision statement be? And we want to kind of focus you on that, that first box, which says, what suggestions do you have for VTP's vision? And we're going to give you a few minutes to kind of do that first category. I see people are kind of uh, typing at, at the other locations. We'll, we'll get yeah. to those comments there. But, you know, for right now, if you have a really good suggestion on the, the yeah. vision statement, that would really be a good place to start. Exactly. Give us a, a broad vision. I think, um, you know, thinking about other VTA projects, Central Bikeways was using the term joyful. Um, you know, other people say they want their projects to be vibrant. Um, you know, just think of what terms and what goals you have for, you know, the overall vision of this project and how you see Santa Clara County in 2050. I see a couple of notes here already. Um, make public transportation, oops, someone moved it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, it says here, affordable, accessible, world-class transportation. Make public transportation so good that bus, oops, he's just editing it right now, the person's just editing it. Um, make public transportation so good that everyone uses it, not just low incomes. Think of it kind of as New York. We've gotten a lot of feedback also on how uh, things have been done in Europe and how people tend to frequently, um, you know, the first option is transit, but driving is kind of the last uh, piece there. So universal. Universal is a good term. We'll give you another just minute for the vision, and then we'll move over to the second category, which is on land use. Someone has put their highly encouraged pedestrian oriented design. Okay. Um, highly prioritize mixed use development as dense as possible around transit. Uh, it's a good suggestion, you know, and then a lot of that will we do in, we would have to do in coordination with our city partners as they have land use authority. Um, I mentioned earlier on, I believe we, um, we actually have a transit oriented communities policy. So in the station areas that BTA owns, the property that it owns there, we have requirements uh, to, uh, to develop those, uh, th those lands and to make it you know, highly uh, um, um, useful for for transit and, and access. Um, highly discourage multi lane roads. Well, VTA has actually done uh, quite a few complete street studies, uh, most notably on Bascom Avenue in San Jose and Campbell and the county. And what we are what we are doing with that project is we had a a, a, a community development for that. Uh, that project study. Um, we uh, then work with our city partners and the public to develop a, a set of uh, visionary uh, um, uh, treatments for Bascom Avenue that we're happy to say uh, the first phase of the, uh, uh, the, the process is complete, but we actually got more money uh, to uh, design the uh, to roadway. Uh, for make it accessible for both bicycle pedestrians, for bicycles, pedestrians, and transit as well. 
I am scrolling to try to see some of these post-its on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Work with cities to get VK at the table on land use near transit. Um, we're actually working on a process. We have our land use development teams actually um, has an engagement with all our member agencies, in some cases, a quarterly basis, in some cases, a monthly basis, to actually talk to them about their actual uh, uh, land use projects that are occurring, their land use plans, their specific plans, uh, uh, housing elements, things like that. So we, we are uh, trying to be more at the table, uh, but also providing support where cities need it. Um, uh, and and providing guidance if if directed to do so. I'm seeing uh, use urbanist principles, walkability, safety, first and foremost, car traffic last priority. Thank you for the feedback. We're getting lots yeah. in this column. Yeah, no, that's good. We want to, we want to hear that. Work with these ensure decent bus light rail and sidewalks can quickly access banks, schools, shopping, and, and a host of others. We are now going to move over to column number three, which I'm trying to zoom in, <laughs> stepping on a people's little avatars. So what suggestions do you have for complete streets in Santa Clara County? Um, and I, just a reminder, in case anybody is not working on the mural, you can obviously see it on your screen. And if you have um, contributions, uh, please feel free to put it in the chat and our staff members will make a note for you. We, we want everybody's opinion. So, yeah. All right, John, what do you want to say about complete streets? <laughs> Develop guidelines for the cities to use, not just VTA. Um, some of our member agency partner cities have asked if we do have specific guidelines for that. Um, we do have our bicycle technical guidelines and pedestrian technical guidelines. Um, we also, when we are funding uh, certain projects on the roadway, uh, they have to complete a complete streets checklist um, that really focuses on them delivering projects that if you are doing a road project, that must also include um, uh, pieces in there that support bicycle, pedestrians, and transit. Um, Protected bike lanes, no more sharrows. We're also working on a effort uh, called the Bicycle Superhighway that's looking at uh, providing a, a, or connecting a series of, uh, in some cases, trails, but also looking at uh, existing uh, streets where we can provide access for uh, bicycles to um, more directly reach their destinations. We recently completed the Central Bikeway Study that looked at um, basically uh, from Palo Alto all the way through San Jose, looking at ways we can uh, open up a, 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 a direct um, you know, bike line that you know, has really good access to transit and other trails and parks and things like that. Uh, and that study was adopt was, is being adopted by our board in the near future. More traffic calming measures, especially in areas of high pedestrian traffic. Road diets on, on, on streets and roads, turning four lanes into two car lanes and two protected bike lanes. Um, more streets designed as destinations, not thoroughfares. Agreed. And one of the ways we hope to do that is partnering with our cities to do that. If we, if we are, and funding um, that comes uh, to fund uh, those improvements, we can make specific requirements from our member agencies to fund specifically uh, those type of uh, projects. Bus only lanes for faster transit. That is a concept that uh, we're, we're also kind of looking into. Um, the city of San Jose is working on uh, a study on Monterey Road that actually is going to look at implementing a bus only lane. Uh, but how do we do that? There's a lot of challenges with that as well, with signals and land uses that are there and how do we you know, do that? Great. Do you have um, any insight into how complete street corridors are selected or chosen? Yeah, so you know, uh, uh, back in 2015, what VTA did was uh, we, um, did an analysis of 
uh, major corridors in Santa Clara County. So we looked at north, south, east to west. Um, uh, those, you know, long roads that had uh, transit. Uh, we wanted to look at those areas that have a lack of, uh, you know, sidewalks and pedestrian facilities. Uh, we wanted to also look at locations that uh, cities have planned to put new development in. Um, and we developed a, a criteria to determine what those complete street corridors were that was approved by our board back in 2015. Uh, and using that, we developed a list of streets that we would entertain doing a complete street study to improve uh, access. So what we did after that was we selected four corridors uh, to do. So the first one was Bascom Avenue. The other was Tasman Drive from uh, uh, Montague Expressway in Milpitas to the end of uh, to Morse Avenue in Sunnyvale. Uh, we did another uh, complete streets location was uh, the Story Keys uh, corridor, which was from on Story Road and Keys Street uh, from Highway 87 all the way to Capitol Ave. Um, we also um, looked at uh, the other one, the Central Bikeway Study, which um, really focused on uh, that connection between Palo Alto and San Jose. Um, and those were the four that were selected. Um, uh, we're just kind of waiting on funding to maybe do more of that work. Um, there's an effort the city of San Jose is undertaking along Stevens Creek that they're, uh, uh, they're focusing their efforts on improving that. Great. We are going to move over to the fourth column where I see people have been very active um, and talk about suggestions for transit. I've also seen wanna... a lot of uh, TSP. Do you want to? Fill out that acronym and talk about that? Yeah, it's transit signal priority is having uh, a transit have uh, uh, the green light to go towards uh, through major intersections. Um, currently, um, you know, if you're in a bus, you're tied to the signals that the automobile is tied to. But if you're in that corridor that has uh, transit signal priority, uh, that, that light could change to green, uh, ensuring a faster. Uh, throughput through um, some of those major intersections. Um, but I just want to also note here that we had a, another process, as I mentioned earlier on, ongoing, which is the Visionary Network for Transit. And that effort is, is going to be wrapping up in the next couple months. We've done a variety of pop-ups, uh, additional community meetings. We've had a, uh, a community-based organization roundtable. We've had uh, some of you on the, on the, in the uh, call today to look at, um, to do an ask BTA session where you'd call in and ask us various questions on different types of projects. Uh, so that uh, Visionary Network for Transit, their work uh, at this early stage is gonna be wrapping up this month in February and, and next month in February. Um, but next week, uh, <laughs> next week yeah, practically. Um, but that effort is gonna be included as our VTA, uh, VTP process. So that will be the transit focus for the VTP will be that. Um, want to note there's also a, uh, maybe we can put that on the uh, chat, there's actually a survey out for that. Um, so if those that haven't filled out that Virginia Network for Transit survey, please fill that out. We'll put the link in the, uh, the chat here. So I want to see what suggestions they have. Uh, improve light rail speed and coverage, yes. Uh, better, says some, some folks say more light rail lines extend green line to Cupertino. Yes, I love that we have a sticky about more light rail lines versus pave over light rail lines. So <laughs> it just shows you that there's different perspectives out here and we're, we're listening to everybody. Yeah. To better signage to get the Mopitas part. Um, there's an effort that um, MTC is leading to look at um, the Clipper Pass program. And one of the things to look at is the actual um, wayfair, way, wayfinding signage. Um, have Hitachi's driverless metro as a successor to light rail in long term. Frequent buses every five minutes, 10 at a minimum. Local service every 15. Overhaul Capitol and Blossom Hill Caltrain stations. Now I will move us over. I mean, I, people are still typing. That's fine. You don't have to stop. Yep. Um, but I'm going to move us over to the final column, which was suggestions for highways and expressways. Mm -hmm. 
we've heard quite a few uh, folks during our outreach process about no highway expansion. Um, one person here wrote, no more highway expansions unless it involves closing a bottleneck gap. Um, redesign interchanges where traffic industry backs up to a standstill on the freeways. Uh, part of our 2016 Measure B program that has a, a, a list of projects that are not widening, there a lot of them are interchange improvements. Yeah, quicker so restrip yeah, quicker restriping on the highways when they get repaved. The lanes are very light in some places. Something we can definitely take to Caltrans. Consider alternatives to a second express lane on 85 and 101, include bus only lanes similar to I-10 in Los Angeles. Okay. Put light rail in the middle of the highways and expressways. That's another comment that we frequently heard at uh, a lot of the other um, venues we did our community outreach on. Okay. Introduction of mass tolls, congestion charging. They want to use it, they should pay for it. As I mentioned, MTC is looking at the uh, uh, the next generation freeway study that is going to be uh, asking some of those questions uh, uh, and trying to um, figure out ways to improve uh, uh, the, ex the express lanes. Variable speed zones and crackdown on left lane campers. Uh, that's something actually that you know we probably don't have control over. That is a Caltrans function. Um, but that is a suggestion we can take back to Caltrans. I will give you all uh, kind of one more minute to give us all of your ideas and then we will head back to the presentation. I love seeing all the, the contributions though. It's great. This is a full board. Maybe I should have made it a little bit bigger. <laughs> Yeah, really good feedback, y'all. Okay, yeah, give it a couple minutes, and then we can. I'm also digging uh, whoever it was who picked this kind of olive stone color for your stickies. I love it. I will stop sharing my screen um, and have Ian uh, bring back the presentation. Thank you all. Okay, so we wanted to um, have some time right now to have, if anyone has any other questions that we can answer, whether it be on kind of the timing of everything. Um, and what we can do actually go to the next slide. I'll put the, uh, timeline up for the VTP. Um, it gives you kind of a sense of what what, what the time frame will be. Um, so right now where we're at is kind of the vision and community engagement. So, you know, your feedback is really helpful to this process. We want to get a better sense from you, but we also want to share it with our committees and our board about what the public is saying about our transportation planning process. Um, so we're at this phase where we're, you know, reaching out to the public, uh, identifying the vision for the plan, developing and finalizing goals. So um, what we intend to do in the next few months uh, before, uh, you know, later in spring is to really uh, develop that set of goals or targets uh, in some cases, and we'll have that approved by our board. So we're doing a lot of discussion right now, not only internally, but through kind of this community outreach process about some of those things that we can include as part of the plan. Um, and then as we move to the spring timeframe, um, we will be then be talking about uh, project list development. And really why we're talking about projects uh, later on this year is because uh, the Plan Bay Area cycle is gonna be starting sometime later this year. So we wanna get ahead of that a little bit. Um, there's other efforts that are going on at the regional level that will impact kind of how we uh, deliver our plan. So we wanna get ahead of some of those activities a little bit. So we will be developing a process to select projects, um, possibly we likely looking at a scoring criteria for them. And as part of that uh, project list development, we do wanna come back out to the public and talk to you all again about what, what are some of those projects that make sense. Um, one of the things I will say is that the last uh, list that was adopted by MTC for Plan Barrier 2050, um, we may bring those, we bring, probably bring that list back and uh, um, look at it again to see 
what things can be done or what things can be added to that list. Um, and that will all happen, you know, between spring and the summer. So most of the su spring and summer will be focused on thinking about projects. And what we have at the bottom there is the VTA visionary network phase. Um, a lot of the transit discussion will happen between now and the springtime. So uh, uh, our, our process uh, kind of kind of fit into the same time frame. And the reason they're ending in the spring is because they want to uh, include some of that feedback to do their annual service plan. So they're going to be re revisiting uh, the service planning again for the, the system that we put out for the past year and see how we can improve it or make changes to it. And that'll be in, in that you know, piece will be uh, another round of public outreach where I think we will go out to the public and, and do a lot more pop-ups and asking specific questions in specific locations. Um, and then in the summer and the fall, we will be thinking about writing the document. Um, really, then we can talk about specific strategies and policies that we could implement as part of that. Um, and then with that, as we do develop the document, we'll do some more public outreach because we do want to keep everyone involved throughout the process. And it is different from the, the previous effort that we did, which really focused specifically only on projects, but not really the entire picture. So one of the sense of kind of the time frame of the picture that we're developing this plan on. And hopefully by the end of the year, we can adopt a final uh, plan. Again, there's there, the schedule could change based on input from our board and direction from our board but it could also change based on what goes on with the plan barrier effort. Um, and one of the big things that they're doing as part of the plan barrier effort is the thing called connect, uh, a process called connected network plan, which is another similar visionary network exercise that they're doing for the region. But um, we are gonna be engaging with them since our process kind of already started. So we wanna uh, um, work with them to figure out uh, where we are, where, where, we, where we meet, where there's challenges and things like that. So we have an opportunity throughout the year to do more talking to the public and our and our partners to figure out uh, uh, the plan. And I want to see if there's any questions or comments down here. We do have a couple questions. Um, we've got some time. If other people have others, please feel free to put them in the box. Uh, one of the questions. I'm not sure that we have an answer to you right this time, Roy, um, but I will look into it. And if you, we get your contact information, we can contact you. Um, it's about improving VTA scheduling problems on access. It says clients often go as a sole rider when others go this, going the same route will wait 45 minutes for their pickup. So I don't think, John, if you have any particular insight into access, um, I but I appreciate the feedback. <laughs> no, no, the, the feedback is good because that does help us in our, when we we're talking about our, um, you know, uh, paratransit service and, and other opportunities through access, um, through the, you know, one of the ways we can do that is talk about it through the visionary network process. Uh, we do, we can identify maybe what are some of the challenges people are facing and what are ways we can improve that service. Uh, through the visionary network process for transit. So that could require, you know, more interaction uh, or, or another, you know, program for funding uh, related to uh, um, access writers um, through our board process. Um, or it could be, you know, uh, trying to figure out the best way to uh, provide solutions for, for um, access. Um, I think one of the things we can do is also, you know, give Roy kind of the connection to um, um, our, our access staff. Um, to answer any specific questions you may have on that. Yeah. Um, Roy and Anna as well asked, how will VTA address the paratransit situation regarding scheduling? So for both of you, if you'd like to um, email community.outreach at vta.org, um, we can get you connected with paratransit and access and try to get some more answers for you. But we do appreciate the feedback um, and knowing that it's a problem, helpful. Uh, we have a question from Amy who says, can you talk about funding for projects versus operations? Are you planning to apply for federal state money for capital projects? And does, will VTA have adequate operation funding for things like more frequent buses? Yeah, so, you know, part of this process really is, uh, eventually what we'll be doing is developing a list of projects. So any of those uh, solutions um, or pro projects that we, that we have, uh, will be eligible for federal and state money. Uh, the reason we do these plans is to identify some of those things. Um, and, and funding really happens, 
it's not like on a calendar basis where every year we expect money. Uh, there are certain fund sources that do operate in that cycle. Um, and there, a lot of those are really operation based. Um, a lot of our operations money does come from Fairbox revenue. Um, but you are right. You know, if we are thinking about expanding to free, more frequent service to 10 minute service, we would have to buy more buses. Uh, and where does that money come from? Uh, a lot of times we get funding uh, through uh, various programs of the state that gets then filtered through the Metropolitan Transportation Commission process. And each um, through a formula, each uh, transit operator gets funding for uh, certain operational operation improvements and other grants to improve service. Um, and then in terms of capital projects, a lot of uh, the projects within the VTP are capital projects. Um, and again, being included in the long range plan does provide access for different funding sources, whether it be state or federal. And each of those uh, uh, project categories has different criteria for funding. So it really, it really depends. Yes. And that you're right. That is a big question. Will we have enough funding to you know, do things like more frequent buses? Um, are there other opportunities to find funding? or create funding that VT hasn't thought of that we could help through this crisis. Um, okay. Okay, we have a question from Michael. Well, two questions. I, first is, will I-880 express lanes be extended um, from SR-237 to US-101 and express lanes on 280 and 680 and RS, uh, SR-87? How will that work? Yeah. Um, Okay, yeah. So, you know, in our express lane program, there we're right now focused on 85 and 101 corridors. Um, there is a project for uh, 880 express lanes between 237 and 101. Um, but again, the, it's, it, it, it's kind of in the long term phase. It's not something we're going to be implementing right away. Uh, but th that is a, a, a project in our uh, expressway, express lane program. Um, eventually, if we find money to do a study on it, because uh, then we'll have to work with Caltrans on uh, doing some initial study work to then determine kind of uh, a time frame for when that project would actually happen. And express lanes on 280, 680, 87. Uh, as I mentioned right now, we're kind of focused on 101, 85. Um, there are projects identified in the express lane program, such as express lanes uh, on 280, 680, and 87. Um, the most recent work we've done on 680 has actually been in coordination with Alameda County um, that recently, not recently, but in the past few years had opened up kind of the express lanes um, in Alameda County, uh, entering into Santa Clara County up to Calaveras. Um, but there's more work to be done on that front too. Thank you. The next couple questions are about light rail. Uh, the first is, will the, oh, I'm sorry. No, there is a second part of Michael's question. I don't want to skip. So will Santa Clara County ever join the BART district um, and should Caltrain and BART merge? Yeah, I, did. That, that's, I think that's something we need to take back. <laughs> I don't know if I can answer yeah. that question. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know that. I can't say ever, right? We never say never, but I don't think that's in the plans. But yes, we can get an we can get an answer for you and follow up. Yeah. Um, so the next question uh, from Harry asks: Will VTA ever expand the light rail system, or are we limited to the current system plus the planned Eastridge expansion? Uh, well, right now um, the current plans are right now just at Eastridge. That, but that has, if you think about it, that has been in the works for many many years. Um, so imagine, you know, how long it took to to do that project. Uh, um, and it, it does cost a lot of money to extend light rail. There's a lot of factors getting to, when can you get the funding? Um, when is it available? Uh, it's, it's just a challenge to fund, um, you know, really extending the light rail. Um, for right now, I think our focus really is on expand, expanding uh, East, to Eastridge. Um, and hopefully it, it, that would then have a connection to the BART system. Um, but at this point, that is probably the only project we're working on at the moment, unless the board directs us to do something else. Great. Uh, this question is from Kyle. He says, when does VTA think they will be getting a new light rail fleet? Will it be from the same manufacturer? manufacturer and will it have covered wheels to allow for safer downtown track travel? Yeah, I, I don't know the answer. I can ask Adam Berger from our uh, 
transit team to get back to Kyle on that. Yeah. Uh, and so as you're speaking of funding, does VTA have a plan to introduce merchandise similar to Lola? That's a great idea. <laughs> um, that's something that I would support. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, what I can tell you is that a lot of VTA staff members would be really into it, um, but ultimately that would come down to our marketing department. And unfortunately, we don't have any of them with us tonight, uh, but we do like the suggestion. <laughs> Uh, Maria asks, are there shorter term plans we can influence? Many ideas like shifting bus schedules probably don't need to wait 28 years. Yeah, you know, that, that, so one thing that we're doing uh, as part of the Visionary Network for Transit is to um, uh, look at ideas related to, you know, you know, where buses go and how they, you know, how, how it can be scheduled. Um, but I, I would also point that every year we do a uh, transit service plan, an annual transit service plan, that we relook at our system and uh, develop ideas for improving it. Uh, and the, some a lot of those ideas come from the members of our public. Um, we can have Maria, um, re, you know, uh, get a hold of, uh, we can have her provide our comment and um, take it to Janice, who's managing the Visionary Network for Transit, as a what are some areas that she can provide any feedback on for her? Um, I think our 2024, which seems crazy that we're already talking about it, uh, but annual service plan will probably start in the summer. Um, so very short term that you can uh, provide comments for next year. Um, another question from Kyle. Uh, has VTA explored super capacitor buses with fast charging infrastructure? Uh, at every bus stop versus battery electric buses that will have a limited daily range? Yeah, so Kyle, um, thanks for the question. Um, um, Adam Berger from our transit planning team is actually involved with, um, we have a requirement from the feds to uh, electrify our fleet by 2040, I think it is. Um, and currently right now what we're doing is looking into opportunities uh, to look at new technologies uh, to help with that. Um, because as you know, technology changes like by the minute. Um, so we're looking at different ways to uh, um, charge our buses, uh, whether we go electric or another um, um, technology that helps us get there. But we are in the process of developing a plan for that because we need to be in compliance with the feds in the near future. Okay, my question is about, uh, can we drag Santa Cruz Metro into joining MTC with the rest of the Bay Area? Yeah. That is, uh, <laughs> that, that's, that, you know, I don't know if I can answer that question, but you know, <laughs> um, yeah. I think they're part of the Monterey County, you know, Transportation Authority. Um, can fencing be put up in downtown San Jose to improve light rail speed? Travels at a crawl currently, and the last update I heard on speed improvement was a long while ago. Yeah, you know, we actually, um, we had a, a pilot project uh, downtown on, um, I can't you know, if you remember the exact location, um, that we did put up some fencing um, along along one of the corridors. Uh, we did it for a little bit and we had to take it out. Um, I think there were some conflicts uh, with, uh, you know, not only traffic, but uh, safety concerns that City of San Jose had brought to us. Um, but if, if there are specific types of safety features we can do for transit, we'd like to hear some of those ideas. Um, we, we do have a fast transit program that does look at various ways to uh, improve uh, light rail. And we have a staff person who's actually working on uh, kind of the future of light rail. And he's presented a couple of times to our board of directors. So if we can share with Harun um, that link to the presentation that our, our planner Jason Kim did, that'd be great. And our last question, uh, based on the 2040 federal um, requirements, have we considered trolley buses? Yeah, again, you know, we'd have to ask Adam um, what the, what their uh, what his solutions uh, have been outlined are for. But um, I think one thing we do need to keep in mind that we have to develop a plan to figure out what that technology is. So that's what currently we are working on. Great, thank you all for all of your questions. Uh, we really appreciate your time this evening. We know that you know 
we're all busy people. Uh, so we appreciate you spending an hour and nine minutes <laughs> with us and telling us about uh, your goals and uh, what you think we should be working on. We really appreciate it. Is there anything else you'd like to add, John, before we close? No, if you can, Ian, if you go into the last slide, um, and I know some, there's some uh, on the chat that have uh, kind of questioning, you know, where do, where do we need to go? Uh, so for the Visionary Network, uh, for, VT, for VTP, uh, we go to www.vta.org slash VTP2050 um, for any information upcoming um, on the VTP plan. Um, um, and then for the Visionary Network for Transit, so like Maria had a specific question on, you know, how to improve that kind of shorter term transit, um, I would direct her to that that website, vta.org slash visionary network. Um, you know, we, we can get you in touch with uh, the staff working on that process uh, and we'd be happy to take your feedback. And so with that, so with that, we will uh, thank you and wish you a good night. Bye.